exactly what we did here this week, but uh, give you a sense of the kinds of things that can actually happen when you're inspired and driven to, uh, you know, to go on a goal and, and actually and make that goal happen. So um, just by a bit, a bit of orientation, for especially for our visitors, uh, what we've got up here is um, a satellite tracking program uh, right here. This white disc is what we call the satellite footprint. It's how much of the Earth the International Space Station can currently see. This little X right here is us here at the Copernic Observatory. And when that white disk starts to get inside where, where, the, where our X is inside that white disk, that's when technically we should be able to talk to the International Space Station. Uh, some other information about that is it's telling us the azimuth, which is the north, south, east, east or west direction. We have to aim our antennas. And also the elevation, because it's going to be tracking through the sky. So uh, right when this disc gets to this edge, uh, here we're going to start calling. Uh, the ham radio operator today is, is Kathy, and she will be calling the, uh, the call sign on the International Space Station. Once they hear us, they'll call back, and then we'll get started with our questions. We've got about a 10-minute window, if, if we're really lucky. Um, where we can pick them up right at the horizon. And we, uh, we practiced this uh, a couple of times, so we are, our students are ready to go. And uh, we're really looking forward to talking to uh, Gennady. There are actually right now three uh, astronauts uh, or cosmonauts on the International Space Station. One American is Scott Kelly. He's actually on there for a year. And he actually has an identical twin, Mark Kelly, who also is an astronaut. Uh, he has since left the astronaut corps, but the two of them are doing sort of a side-by-side uh, -side biological studies so that when Scott comes back, they can get a sense of what's the uh, long-term effects on the body. Uh, and having an identical twin. QSL, thank you much. And we'll give you a call in a second. I've got a control operator uh, with our... With our uh, just watching our, uh, our rotor and And uh, so he's saying that he's got five minutes before uh, we should be able to see the International Space Station. So Scott Kelly is the one American currently on board. He, however, is not licensed as an amateur radio operator. The two Russians on board actually are uh, ham radio operators. And so Gennady actually has a, a unique distinction in that he currently holds the world record for the amount of days spent in space. He has already spent over 800 days over a couple of missions in space. And by the time this, this, this mission is done, he will have spent, uh, I think, 875 days in space. Uh, and this is actually uh, what it'll look like for him, because that's uh, him operating the ham radio station in the Russian segment of the International Space Station. So, um, are there any questions I can answer for you before we get started? Yes? How fast does the ISS travel? How fast does the ISS travel? Very. Uh, it's actually traveling 17,500 miles an hour. So basically, it's about, I think, four miles a second, five miles a second. So you, you, to get from here to downtown Binghamton would take two seconds. Um, so it's, it's really screaming, uh, screaming along. 
And uh, again, for those that may not know about this, you can actually, in the evening, you can actually see the International Space Station if it's clear. Uh, it just is this, this bright light that moves very slowly across the sky. It doesn't have any blinking lights on it. And uh, right now it's not visible the way uh, the orbit is currently um, mapping on the Earth. It's, it's more of a daytime uh, satellite for us right now, but in a couple weeks it'll become uh, visible again. So, um, so what we're going to do here is, again, Kathy, when we, while we're ready to start, Kathy will actually call the ham radio call sign that's on the International Space Station. She'll, and she'll be using a phonetic alphabet. It's Oscar November 4, no, Oscar Romeo 4, India Sierra Sierra, and all our kids, students here, learned about the phonetic alphabet. Uh, it's a way of, of confirming uh, whether you, you know, because a B sounds like a D, sounds like an E. So by using a phonetic alphabet, it makes it clear what you're what you're trying to communicate. So she'll call uh, or you know or for ISS, and the ham radio call sign here at Copernic is K2ZRO, and so she'll call it Kilo Two Zulu Romeo Oscar, and she'll keep calling until we finally hear his signal come back, and then we'll get uh, started with our questions. All right, that's uh, the computer telling us that. It's about to, uh, we're about, I'd say, three minutes away. Two or three minutes away. So what I'm going to do is uh, get back into my audio engineer's uh, position. And uh, I'll ask Steve to um, open up the squelch. So we're going to start hearing a rush of sound. Um, and other than when, when, when Kathy's transmitting, and then once we finally hear him, we should actually hear him. Now, Again, you have to remember that Russian is, I mean, English is not his first language. But, you know, um, so you have to listen probably a little, a little more closely than you might otherwise. But uh, um, we've had a couple of, um, he's had a number of other uh, successful contacts. So uh, we're very fortunate, again, to be able to, uh, to speak with him. So I'm going to start getting ready for this, uh, this contact. Romeo 4, India Sierra Sierra, this is Kilo 2, Zulu, Romeo Oscar, do you copy? Over. Oscar Romeo 4, India Sierra Sierra, this is Kilo 2, Zulu, Romeo Oscar, do you copy? Over. Hi, this is Aiden. How does the space station deal with the threats of that junk or steer clear of any natural pieces of space debris, like a meteor or bits and pieces of comets? Over. Welcome to the Copernic Observatory. Here's the first question. 
Hi, this is Aiden. How does the space station deal with the threats of that junk or steer clear of any natural pieces of space debris? Like a meteor or bits and pieces of comets. Over. <laughs> This is Maria. How do you know? I mean, this is Maria. Do you have any animals aboard the space station? Over. You copy us. Over. Hi, this is Aiden. How does the space station deal with the threats of that junk or steer clear of any natural pieces of space debris, like a meteor or bits and pieces of comets? Over. Okay, thank you very much for a good question. Uh, you're quite right. We have this. In space, because of many, many parts of the satellite, but in case of this situation, we have special program on board space station, and initiating this program, we can increase our altitude or decrease just to avoid collision or. This is Maria. Do you have any animals aboard the space station? Over. Okay. We have some animals and we can in past kind of, this is the fish, this is mice, this is spiders on board their station. I contacted his parents with slow birds. Over. This is Julian. How long can an astronaut stay in space? Over. Excuse me, repeat your question again. This is Julian. How long can an astronaut stay in space? Over. It depends on the situation. As for me, for example, this is my sixth flight. And I have told the time staying in space 815 days. If we speak about one flight, one Russian cosmos, Valery Parakol, he spent in space 450 days. This is Sam. What kinds of food do you eat and do you gain weight or lose weight? Over. Thank you for the question. We have different types of food rations and food. We have rated, sublimated, canned food, uh, fresh food, for example, what progressed our cargo ship which talks to the space station was Sunday. This cargo ship brought up for us some fresh vegetables and those like oranges, apples, onions, or... This is Zachary. Do you actually have a defined day and night as we do on Earth? And do you sleep eight hours a day over? Okay, we are living and working and having rest in space according to GMT time, Greenwich time. And usually we have eight hours certain time and nine hours this is virtual day. And seven hours this is just pre sleep and after sleep time. Or This is Matt. How do the astronauts keep in touch with their families while they're away <coughs> so long? Over. No problem. We have we have we can communicate with our families many times this per day by using IP phone. Internet, for example. This is Rohan. Is being in space changing your views towards Earth? Over. Of course, of course. Looking from space at our Earth, it seems to me we have to care. We have to take care of our Earth. Because for me, our planet looks like a spaceship that we are flying in a universe and everyone for us should take care of this, our beautiful planet. This is Jacob. What do you like to do for fun in space? Over. Ah, uh, doing my free time. Let's take pictures 
Uh, I think we're done. Thanks. Okay. The battery died. I'm gonna get it for camera. Yeah. We can just switch to battery next time. The battery is like stuck in that one. Oh. Like usually. Yeah.